and start engraving. Hello and welcome, Arce Shim in the hangar. I'm testing the Laser Packer 4 today. Disclaimer, as always in my videos, it's all about transparency. Laser Packer reached out to me. It was their idea that I test this device. They wanted to get me in a position where I sent the video to them for approval because they had yeah, not so optimal experience with reviews in the past. They have no editorial input on my video. Many of those negative reviews were some of the features are not as intuitive as you would think. It looks like the iPhone of engravers with this shiny aluminum, uh, yeah, build quality, top notch. Shiny aluminum, everything with screws and very sturdy quality. So you think the software is totally intuitive? It is most of the times, but some decisions are a bit, a bit wonky. You have to spend some time with the device to get used to it and then it works really fine. Okay, let's do a quick unboxing. <laughs> Just note that everything is very well packaged, very well thought out and inspired by Apple. You, you see it in, in a lot of ways. Just it looks very professional and high quality. So first of all, I will give you a really, really quick overview of the components that I got. This is the Pro Set. There are many nice little features. This screws in place the laser head. The mount is now upside down. And this whole thing can be tilted by these set screws. There are some springs in here. If we tap, we can move it slightly up and down. It's got this round display with a progress bar up there and of course percentage can press this button to stop the laser. Here on the vertical axis you also have a stepper motor and you can move it up and down either in single steps or if you long press it it will go as long as you stop it or as it reaches the top. 24 centimeters and this is 5 centimeters so 29 centimeters the tallest object you can have there is 14 centimeters in height by the way it's really scary to look into the laser's eye you shouldn't but if you place it on this side it tends to fall over because the yeah, center of gravity is weird or off okay you see that's quite easy to mount it's like mounting camera on a tripod and now this thing rests there without tipping over that's something that other reviews just didn't try and blamed the project for falling over not being well sought out yeah well just take a second guess <laughs> and, and it works this way you can place it right next to a wall focus the 15 centimeters and engrave on various objects so there's a lot of versatility in how you can move this i think that's one of the biggest advantages of the laser packer in comparison to the Trility falcon 2 pro that i already reviewed and to the x tool s1 so for smaller objects like this stone this could be a good laser for you still not sure yet I mean, this with the rotary and the slider is almost the price or a similar price than the S1. And I think here you get more. This thing has two lasers, a 450 nanometer. It is 10 watts. That's not a lot, but it's okay to cut poplar wood or to cut up to, I think, 8 millimeters. This is not the laser to cut a lot of things or thicker things. Speciality is a second laser that you can just, with, with swiping, you can move to the 1064 nanometers. Infrared lasers are good to engrave on metal surfaces. So normally with other laser engravers on metal, you can really just burn away some coating, scratching the surface. <laughs> with infrared lasers, you can even stainless steel can be great. Here on the laser packer, they use the power rating, zero to hundred percent but the second parameter is depth, which kind of makes sense. If you go slower, you burn in deeper. In the software, however, you see a correspondence. In brackets, you have the speeds in millimeters per second. 
Speed is another good point. Can be quite high because not a lot of physical movement. The laser in there works with two mirrors on X and Y axis and the mirrors can be moved really, really quick. So you don't have a laser head that has to be moved like on the desktop lasers, but with the rather low power of only 10 watts, you still need to move slow to have enough laser power there. So there are other lasers with more power and also the mirror, then it can engrave really, really fast. In the software, you have preset materials that give you an idea. Poplar plywood, for this example, engraved job here, I used sheet of poplar plywood that looks fine. So these were the right settings. For other materials, I did a bit of experimenting and I will put you this text in the description. Why is this not mounted? Nice in theory, just like this. Magnetic mounted, you're always touching the object, you may be moving the object. This little fan, the fumes happen here where it's engraved and then it's blown out, out into your room. You need a hose connected to your window or to your outlet. If you use this more often, I would suggest using it outside, maybe on your porch. For $50 you can go to Amazon. A hose with a big fan in it to suck away the fumes. Because of the nature of this thing, it's so versatile and how you mount it, they couldn't come up with a really totally working solution to extract the fumes. I understand this. One aspect though, as you remove this, you need to check and a disclaimer, go into the what's called the free mode, and then you can operate without this shield and you have to always wear the protective goggles. It's not idiot proof. You give this to your kids and they play around, they could damage their eyes or cut away their fingers or whatnot, but it gives you the freedom to do a lot. On my other laser engravers, if you open it, it will stop immediately and there's not an easy way around it with so many sensors. It's a downside maybe from the security perspective, but it's also a plus for me in terms of versatility. An Android tablet like this Xiaomi 6 is maybe the best way to design stuff and to send it over to the engraver because, I mean, the PC app and the phone Android app, they look quite similar, they work quite similar, but yeah, the preview, uh, check out this now, the preview works way smoother on the Android app than via USB. For the oil placement I can move it around almost in real time which feels very very cool. And if I need to be precise on my positioning I just zoom in on the tablet and look I can make it sub millimeter exact. You cannot set the settings for engraving while you design it here and they are set after preview. So once preview is done, preview Next step is upload. You can decide between 1, 2 and 4K. Send file. And now comes power, watt and the depth and the passes. And here I now really want to go all in with 80. Confirm. Laser engraving. And this is so cool. Oh, <laughs> but it stinks a lot. This is for sure dangerous. Toxic. Look at this. G3 Pro. Try to guess what this key is for soon on my channel. With the rectangle I cannot tell if the dog will fit nicely. So an easy trick is to create little rectangles on features like the ears and voila I see that the left ear suits on the stone and the right ear selected shale slab a preset for shale or shifa or slate stone works quite well on this darker rock. This is a clip art and another picture. This is another 100% power and 30% depth. 30 depth is about 1000 millimeters per second of speed. That was done in, let's say, five minutes. Okay, if I inspect those two images, I mean, it's an unfair comparison because this is a different image. I think the best thing you can do on slate stone is cut the edges of an object so it stands out way more. Oh.
it's a nice touch to be able to engrave a rock. I could have done a better job on scaling and positioning this with my little rectangle trick. 450 nanometers and more power, 10 watts in that case, instead of 2 watts. It sounds, it sounds different in the text engraving mode. And it's quite fast. Just for the fun of it, I will engrave something with the 450 nanometer laser. So with the 450 nanometers, you don't touch it at all. I love it. And slower. Sounds weird. <laughs> Maybe better to read in direct light conditions, but in some reflective scenarios the white engraving actually looks clearer or better. You get five of these aluminum oxide business cards. They are black, but if you burn away the first layer then it's white or grey. This is 100% and 83 depth for the QR code. I inverted my picture, which is important if you laser on a black object and yeah, kind of shoot away the black color code. Engraved all the way to the edge. 50 of these for like $10 and it's a really cool way of having a unique business card. With this rotary accessory you can mount various objects and then you have a rotation axis but there are some things to take care of. Because this is such a flexible and versatile solution you can also do a lot of things wrong like the motor or the rotation thing should be on the left side you need to add it as an option in the software for it to work. The same is the slider. You need to check the box if you use the slider or the rotary tool. The rotary tool only worked with the Bluetooth connection on the PC, not with the USB cable. Bear that in mind. And yeah, that, that was weird. In the PC software, you need to find the spot where to enter the diameter of your rotary object. You need to scroll down here. And here you fi find circumference. Or you just measure the diameter in millimeter. If you place it over the laser head, you need to mount this height extension. The laser needs to be 15 centimeters over the focal point. If you have long objects that maybe are heavy, you have this support. But this is support is somewhat limited in the height and in, in its use. Maybe if you engrave on a bottle, on a dark bottle. Oh, that's bright. That's oh, and I didn't look. I didn't use the goggles. Oh my god! This is so bright. Huh? and that's quite accurate. It's like the seven millimeters of space that I left. By the way, the, the setting for recycled paper worked quite well, which was. 39 power and 72 depth is a good value. Try to engrave some images. Let's engrave some shit <laughs> to stay in this scene. I hope the review will not be shitty. The slider, I will show you now how you can set up the slider. It's mount this height extension. The connection side should be on the left. Of course, like always, you should be connected. Better over Bluetooth, it seems. The mode settings we want to have the slider mode enabled and I also have free mode. Then you just go ahead and draw a rectangle inside the whole red area. We go to preview, select this rectangle. Once I click continue here, the table will move. So in the width you see where it would engrave. And by moving it shows you the vertical axis, horizontally in our case now. This way and also like this way if you want to engrave further down. Instead. Just keep in mind you don't want to crash the table into the post here. Set it up like this. You can also align it like this. Just put some random clip in there. 
And if I place this now, the border will be displayed in the preview. So I hit preview. If you use the slider or the rotary tool, you will always only see a line. So that's, that's fine. The printable area though is uh, 16 centimeters in width and 30 in length. Say continue. Uh, looks about right there. So that um, normal white paper that's 100% power and 10% depth. Surprising high number on this white sheet of paper. So really engraving on a thin sheet of paper is a yeah, difficult job because you either cut through or you don't touch it enough. 110 looks like a good starting point. Maybe we need more. In comparison, I disconnected the slider and I'm just in the normal engrave mode. Now in the preview I have square and I will use the same settings and see if we see a difference in quality if it doesn't have to use the motor slider and just move the mirrors. Maybe without the slider it looks a bit better, more composed. If you just sometimes need a larger area to engrave, a whole page of letter or A4, this could be a good investment, the slider. If you plan to have a larger laser as a secondary laser to this one, then just forget about the, uh, about the slider. Can I recommend you buying this? This really depends on your use case as often. It's not cheap. Maybe they get it down in price now. Now that the Laser Packer 5 is almost out yet, yeah, this could be a budget option now that, that it needs to be cleared from their stock. So for the money and if you need to cut larger things, maybe you want to go to the 40 watt laser. You just run a small business and most of the times want to engrave beautiful things engraved on small objects as your as your main application, 12 by 16 centimeters with your normal area. With the slider, it's 16 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So that's the maximum size that you can engrave. But with its versatility, you can have a huge object where you only want to engrave a small part or label it. You can do it with this. You cannot do it with the X tool as well, for example, because you simply cannot fit the large object in the smaller working area of the desktop laser. Thanks a lot for watching this review. Thanks Lacebacker for sending this review sample. If you have some questions, check out my video's description. Usually I put a lot of technical specifications and infos down there. Of course, you can also ask me directly in the comment section below. If you just want to say hi there, it's nice as well. I always enjoy reading or getting comments from you guys. It's the part of my job here that is really fun to interact with you guys. So let me know. What are your experiences with lasers? Okay, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.